Good afternoon, guests, and welcome to the weekly with Dr. Tom. This is your way to stay up to date with everything healthcare related across the country. This week, we'll be joined by Savelli, Benjamin, Mark, and Miguel for part two of Diabetes and Technology. We'll be discussing innovation in the treatment of diabetes and the real life benefits they have. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the seminar. Submit your questions throughout by using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We look forward to your engagement. Now, here's Dr. Tom. Good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to the seventh edition of the weekly. Today on part two of Diabetes Technology, we will be focusing on the new generation of semi-automatic insulin pumps. To help us get our heads around this complex topic, we have not one, not two, but four panelists, all living with type 1 diabetes and all using one of these amazing systems today in our virtual studio. I'll introduce them shortly. If you have diabetes and are on this show, I hope you are asking yourself, could my life be made better by one of these super pumps? If you have type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes taking multiple shots of insulin, the answer is a resounding yes. These super pumps, correctly termed hybrid closed loop or HCL pumps, are a combination of an insulin pump, a continuous glucose monitor or CGM, and software that based on the CGM reading controls the amount of insulin infused by the pump. With you properly trained, and these devices correctly configured and maintained, all you need to do is to enter into your device the number of carbs in the upcoming meal. Savelli, one of the panelists today, told me during rehearsal that even carb counting is no longer required for him. This, viewers, is the long-awaited artificial pancreas. It is here. It is so exciting I can hardly contain myself. Since the necessary insulin pumps are already covered by Pharmacare, the only obstacle now to widespread adoption is coverage of CGM by the province. Minister Dix, please, 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 for all of our 50,000 type ones and many more type twos. Now, a quick overview of the hybrid closed loop pumps available to Canadians. As you can see, there are four systems available today. The first are DIY, do-it-yourself systems, one of which itself uses an excellent retail non-HCL pump. The other two are full retail systems. Why are we talking DIY on the weekly, you ask? This is because DIY systems have been available for more than five years, while the first retail system, the Medtronic 670G, only came to market 18 months ago. And the second, the tandem T-Slim Basal IQ only six weeks ago. We are going to hear about these four systems in order by our panelists. The first three pumps are covered by Pharmacare, either directly or indirectly, including the cost of tubing. Ironically, no CGM is yet covered in British Columbia. Our first panelist is Ben Mammon. Ben is a UBC medical student He's not a BC Diabetes client, but he's been a major BC Diabetes resource, instrumental in helping us set up our CGM service. Today, Ben will be doing a tag team on DIY systems with the second panelist, Savelli Cotts. Savelli is a BC Diabetes client dating back five years when he volunteered for a clinical trial for his newly diagnosed type 1 diabetes. He lives in the Bahamas. Ben, welcome to the weekly. Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen here and get the presentation started. All right. So hi, everyone. My name is Ben, and I'm here with my friend Savelli. And we're here to talk to you today about uh, the do-it-yourself hybrid artificial pancreas system known as Loop. We are not experts. We're just very happy users. Um, and we want to share this technology with all of you because it's changed our lives for the better. So this is our schedule. We only have eight minutes, so it's going to be a very quick blow through of a brief introduction to loop, how you can start looping. I'm going to give you my perspective on what looping with a Medtronic pump is like, and then Savelli is going to talk about his perspective looping with the Omnipod. 
And then uh, we're gonna have time for Q and A after the other presentations. So what is Loop? Put simply, Loop is an iPhone app that controls your insulin pump. This is what it looks like on your iPhone. And how it works is if your blood sugar is high, it'll tell your pump to give you more insulin. And if your blood sugar is low, it's gonna tell your pump to stop giving you insulin or give you less insulin. And the amazing thing is that this is all done automatically without you having to do anything. Um, and so in that way, it kind of works like the pancreas does in someone who doesn't have diabetes, giving you more insulin when your blood sugar is high and giving you less when your blood sugar is low. You're probably wondering how you get this app on your phone. It's not available in the app store. And that's because this whole system is not regulated by Health Canada. It's not medically approved. It's a very highly experimental open source project. So what that means is the app and all of the software have been built by uh, volunteer software engineers with type one diabetes or connections to type one diabetes. And they've shared it on the internet for free. This is how you actually get the app on your phone. You use an Apple computer and an app called Xcode, and that allows you to build the app onto your phone. So as you can tell, this whole system is very reliant on the Apple ecosystem. Currently, Android is not supported, although there are other DIY options that exist, but those are not covered in this presentation. So how does Loop work? The first component is a continuous glucose monitor. There's two options. You can either use the Dexcom system or the Freestyle Libra system with the Meow Meow transmitter and the Spike app. No matter which system you choose, the end result is that you're gonna have your blood glucose data being transmitted to your phone every five minutes. And the Loop app is gonna take that data and what it does is it runs it through an algorithm every five minutes as your blood sugar is coming in. And then it recommends basal rate adjustments or boluses based on a prediction model that's housed in the app. And then what it does is it takes those recommendations and it sends the command to your pump using um, a little computer called a Riley link. So the Riley link is kind of like the communicator between the iPhone app and your pump. Um, and that's the picture of it right there in the middle. Uh, the AA batter is just for scale. And this is what it looks like. It's a, li a little computer uh, circuit and it's got an antenna here and a lithium ion battery. Um, and that sends commands to your pump. And there's two pumps that are supported right now. You can either be using the Omnipod system or one of these obsolete Medtronic pumps. The newer Medtronic pumps are not supported by Loop. Uh, and this is a grocery list of what you'll need if you want to start looping. Uh, these slides will be made available to you after the presentation. And all of the text here is linked so you can go and look through and uh, see what you need to start looping. This is a picture of my setup, looping with Medtronic. I've been looping now for about three to four years. I started with one of the um, other systems and now I've been on loop for about two years. Um, this is the app running on my iPhone and then I have my insulin pump um, over here and you can see this is the infusion set that I use and that is the tubing that goes into my body. The little reservoir here is filled with insulin and the Dexcom is what's reading my blood sugar. I also have it being transmitted to my wrist so I can see what my blood sugar is on my uh, watch. And all of that information is being sent to my pump through the Riley link, which is pictured here. Um, and this is a picture of me running the marathon last year. And I had loop in my little belt here. And there's my pump on the side. And you can see how it works. As my blood sugar was starting to go lower, it suspended insulin delivery right here. And then it made sure that my blood sugar was nice and steady for the whole marathon. Uh, these are some of the benefits of using the loop system. You have improved glycemic control with less work. You're reducing your acute risk of long-term complications and hypoglycemia. And it's super cool to be able to use my iPhone and a smartwatch to control insulin delivery. There are safety measures uh, built into the app. Uh, if there's any issues, the pump will default to the manually programmed basal rates. And this is a screenshot that I took uh, that shows you when you want to bolus the iPhone app actually requires your face ID or your touch ID uh, or your device passcode before it administers any insulin. These are just some downsides to looping. The Riley link is extra hardware that you have to carry around and charge. The setup does require some patience and instruction reading. Um, and then for Medtronic users, I'm using this out of warranty pump. So if anything were to happen to it, I wouldn't be able to contact Medtronic and get support from them. The only support through the for the system is through 
a Facebook group. Uh, it's called the Looped Group. You can look it up on Facebook and there's about 20,000 people in there all using the Loop system. And this is a screenshot I took of someone who asked for uh, help the other day. And then you can just see other people will comment and try to give troubleshooting advice. And that's the only way we can get support for the system. So this is who I think should be using Loop. It's the person that wants the most cutting edge technology available for diabetes management. If you want greater flexibility with the type of hardware and software that you're using, if you're willing to stay up to date and troubleshoot online, if you can afford 24 seven CGM and the cost of the Riley Link and Apple developer membership, and if you have enough computer skills to follow online instructions, you don't have to be a computer programmer by any means, um, but you do have to have some patience with the instructions. I'm gonna to toss it over now to Savelli, who's gonna talk about the Omnipod system. Uh, yes, hi, uh, hello everybody, thank you for joining. Ben, thanks uh, for your great part of the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to just, um, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Omnipod and um, why uh, I switched, uh, I used to use Minimed and why I switched to Omnipod for myself and for my daughter who is also type 1 uh, and looping. Um, it's, it's less noticeable, it's waterproof, uh, it's, there's no dangling cord uh, that gets on the way. Um, it's a it's new, new piece of hardware, uh, meaning that, uh, uh, that um, uh, you will, uh, that uh, you can get it from, uh, from Omnipod uh, shipped to you and, and it's uh, uh, paid by the provincial healthcare for most provinces. <coughs> uh, then if anything goes wrong, you, you throw the current pod out and you put a new one on. That, that's another way, that, that's another thing why it's good. Uh, the disadvantages are because it's kind of you know it's hidden in the back of your arm uh, for most people for most people wearing it. If you if you're so active, uh, which the spot allows you to to be, and uh, uh, you end up hitting it at something, or you're swimming a lot, and you and you hit it while swimming, you can displace the cannula and not know about it. So you would need an immediate replacement. Uh, so. Um, that's you know warning for that <clears throat> you would also need to carry a couple of pods with you and insulin because you cannot put your insulin in the pod uh, ahead of time because it actually activates the pod and you cannot activate it ahead of time <clears throat> so you would need to carry at least two pods and the insulin uh, and uh, to, with to call it your emergency bag or whatever with you <clears throat> also you have to think about the fact that uh, this pod does not have an interface so if something goes wrong and you lose your phone or your phone becomes inoperable, <clears throat> so will your pump. Uh, so you will either have to go manual or you will have to set up uh, a new phone right away. <clears throat> but uh, having to do that, uh, diabetes, there's, there's no guarantees with diabetes. There's no, uh, no matter what company uh, advertises or, or says, it's still, uh, uh, there are no guarantees. You can still have a low, you can still have a, a high, and uh, I found that for myself and for my daughter, it's been working great. And our A1Cs are uh, in the low sixes, and we don't bol we don't bolus uh, unless unless it's really super high carb uh, content, and uh, we don't put in the carb count. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to go with whatever is acceptable for my teenage daughter. She's not gonna do carb count. So I'm, I'm going the same way, so I'll, I'll have the same wave as her. Um, and it's been working for us. The blood sugar actually go, rarely goes over 10 after food uh, because the system detects it uh, quickly and uh, administers. The, the new version has an audible feature, which has been working great. Uh, so I, I, I will answer any questions uh, here or by email. If you'd like to contact me uh, and you know, you're thinking if you want to use the system or not and I, I yield my uh, my time <laughs> thanks Savelli and Ben I think we have a couple questions here the first one is for Bruce from Bruce for Ben I attended your workshop in October and I have been looping since thank you for your excellent program your expertise and computer skills since my computer tech skills are limited I'm wondering how necessary is it to update the app that's on my phone? That's a great question. So uh, the app gets updated all the time. 
um, as people add new features, like um, there was a recent feature that Savelli was talking about um, where we now have an auto bolus feature. So the algorithm will give you boluses automatically instead of just recommending changes to your basal rate. So you can still use the uh, version that you're using, but if you do want to have those new features, then you're going to want to update the app. So it's really uh, up to you whether or not you want to stay up to date um, and keep going with those new features. Thanks, Ben. The next question is for Savelli. For loopers, do you have or have you heard of many instances of no sensor readings? So whether it's out of range or for other reasons, this would mean that all the time your phone doesn't get the reading, you're, you completely stop looping. Is this a common problem? Have you ever heard of it? <clears throat> yeah, well, I've been using uh, Spike uh, for, for quite some time and Spike has become unreliable and I don't advise anyone to use it. Uh, but if you use, uh, for G6, if you use uh, Dexcom's app, it's been pretty stable. Uh, I, I have not been noticing uh, any uh, for myself or for my daughter, I have not been noticing uh, any uh, mystery readings. Thanks, Savelli. To you, Dr. Elliot. Okay. We're having a little break and, and the, the panelists don't know, but we, you know, this is COVID-19 and this is where we started our, our, uh, our weekly um, sessions. And we always look about safety. So the 11th commandment that, that, uh, that we've never talked about before is thou shalt not COVID thy neighbor. Prevention is the best cure. Remember, obsessive hand washing. You're going to wash your hands. We don't have time to show you Dr. Samuel's demonstration on how to wash our hands. And more importantly, we don't touch our face. We're going to clean surfaces that are touched by other people who's, who, who, who we don't know uh, whether or not they, ha they wash their hands properly. We're going to do social distancing. We're going to st stay at home. And if we can't stay at home, we're going to stay more than two meters apart. And then finally, when we go outside the house, we're in a situation where we can't control how close people get to us or whether they're going to cough or sneeze in our direction, we're always going to wear a mask. BC Diabetes recommends we all wear a mask when we're outside the house. All right, well, we're going to move along here. It's time for our third panelist, and that is Mark Fournier. Mark is a Nova Scotian who came to British Columbia six years ago. He's been a BC Diabetes client ever since and has had diabetes for a long time. Mark is big on technology, he always ahead of the curve, often sending me emails with links about new gadgets and new treatments and asking my advice. Mark's been using the Medtronic 670G system for more than six months. Mark, welcome to the weekly and tell us about the 670G. Uh. I'm following up to Ben and Savelli. I'm feeling like weak right now. Um, my name is Mark Fournier. Um, I, as Dr. Elliot has said, um, I've been a diabetic for about 33 years now. Um, I've been on Medtronic since 2004 and on the 670G since the new year. Um, and each stage of the way has been kind of life changing. Um, the 670G, um, is the first time I've played around with the hybrid systems. Um, and uh, it includes what they classify as an auto mode, um, which isn't quite as auto mode as the loop system has yet, uh, but it's getting there. Um, the 670G, um, as shown on the screen, um, excuse the scratches, I had a little bit of a fall, um, is, um, Kind of switches from a, a, a basal model. Um, it's, they still call it a basal model. It's an auto basal, um, similar to the loop system, where uh, it will vary your, your um, basal amount every five minutes, um, depending on what your blood sugars are at, um, and based off of a previous six-day um, analysis of your, uh, your, your blood sugars. Um, looking at the graph above, um, for the time between 2,200 hours last night and 2,300 hours, because my sugars were dropping, um, it wasn't doing any basal at all, um, which is kind of where I like to have it. Um, 
it basically means that I'm, I'm below the below the limits properly. Um, it tries to maintain your blood sugars as close to um, 6.6 uh, millimoles per liter um, or 120 milligrams per deciliter um, at all times. Um, and it does a pretty good job of that. Um, unlike the loop system, um, I do get highs that are above the tens, above, above tens and occasionally above 14s, depending on what I eat. Um, pizza is particularly bad. Um, the, um, the mini med automatically adjusts for your um, insulin sensitivity. Um, so there's no longer something you've got to worry about, um, unlike the, the older pumps. Um, as shown on the diagram right now, that is the CGM. Um, it's about the size of a toonie uh, around, and it's all the edges are rounded. So there's nothing really to hook on anything. And the, the tape they send out for you with you um, is such that it, it literally encapsulates the whole thing. Um, both the CGM and the pump are waterproof. Um, the pump is waterproof for up to, I think it's 60 minutes, 45, 45 minutes to 60 minutes. Um, so you can literally take it swimming if you so desire. Um, can't imagine anybody doing that. Um, but if you go canoeing or, or, or boating and you happen to fall in, you don't have to worry about your pump anymore. Um, because there is a max um, for how much it will auto dose you as far as the bowl is concerned, um, I'm still doing carb, uh, carb counting and still doing manual boluses um, to compensate for meals. Um, can't get away from that one yet. Um, the, uh, the pump is designed um, so that when you're in auto mode, um, if you are hitting your, what, what they classify as your max bolus for over a four hour period of time, um, it will auto shut, auto shut off your, 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 your auto mode until you take a, take, until you take a blood glucose um, or a blood reading. Um, many because of the fact that it's kind of worried that it might be off a little bit and wants, to conf wants you to confirm it um, before it goes any further. Um, same thing for, for low blood, blood glucose. Um, when I go down below the, the, the 6.6 or whatever, it no longer does basils anymore. Um, so you essentially shuts off your insulin. Um, and uh, if you stay down too low um, for too long of a period of time, um, it will auto, it'll, it'll pop out of auto mode also um, as a security measure until you do a blood glucose and confirm that what it believes is correct um, is actually correct. Um, what else? Um, still do the carbon cap. Um, the big thing I like about the the the, the, the Medtronics um, or or the hybrid systems in in, in, in general is the fact that um, when you're active, um, your sugar is going low. Um, as Ben showed with his his, his racing, um, it applies to America as well. Um, because the pump automatically shuts off the, the, the basal rate and adjusts accordingly, um, you're not worried that if you're overly active, your blood sugars are going to drop out on you um, in the middle of something. Um, I tend to do a lot of outdoor work um, on the weekends, and uh, it's nice not having my blood sugars <laughs> drop out anymore like they did last summer. Um, in terms of shortcomings of the Medtronic, um, there are still pros, there's still cons involved into it. Um, most of the systems are along the same same lines. Um, the CGM for the Medtronic is uh, still requires calibrations um, and still requires um, the occasional blood glucose during the day. Um, I wish they could get rid of that, um, but I can understand why it's there. The um, it's a closed system pump. Um, unlike what you're gonna hear later on in the call, um, the, to update your pump, the, you can't just update the software, you have to actually update the whole pump itself. Um, so as new features come along, as in auto boluses, um, I'm gonna to have to upgrade the whole pump, um, which is kind of a pain, but issues you, it's a lot less pain than giving, giving insulin on a regular basis, um, like I used to do. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. Um, 
getting coverage for um, the 670G um, was a little bit of a pain. Um, Pharmacare has a requirement that you have to have your blood sugars below nine, or sorry, your A1C below nine. Um, mine was above it, um, and my old pump had died at the same time. Um, Medtronic was fantastic on giving me a loaner for the duration. Um, it was very hard to get myself back down below um, eight point uh, down down below nine. Uh, I got myself down to eight point two. Um, Pharmacare covers a good chunk char char of the pump, um, and ever since I've been on this pump, my estimated A1Cs are around seven point one, um, and they haven't really fluctuated much from there. Um, so the pain of getting onto it um, with Pharmacare's help um, is de definitely well worth the results afterwards. Thanks, Mark. That's fantastic. I think we have time for one question here. It's from Mindy. Mark, as someone who has now been using this technology for a little while, could you explain what the absolute best part of it has been for you? Uh, with the new pump, um, I can forget I have it on for more often than I had before. Um, one of the things that I hate about diabetes, and probably everybody does, um, is low blood sugars when you're in the middle of the night sleeping. Um, and even on the old pump that I had with Medtronic, um, because of the fact there was no CGM involved, um, I would wake up in the middle of the night, I would go to the kitchen, and I would gorge on food because my sugars were low. Um, and I'd just go into almost in a panic mode. Um, with the new pump, because of the fact that I know that it shuts off um, the insulin when the sugars go too low, um, I still get the alerts. It still wakes me up, but I'm no longer in a panic mode um, because I know where I'm at. Um, I, I, I know that the pump is going to be making it worse by having this background basal that continues to go through my system. Um, so I generally have a lot more restful sleeps. Um, mainly because of the fact that I'm, I'm not stressing out over it as, as, as badly as I used to. Um, so I would definitely say the reductions in, in, in worries about uh, hypos um, tends to be probably the biggest thing. Thanks, Mark. I think we're going to go over to Miguel now. Dr. Ali, do you want to introduce Miguel? Yes, yes. Uh, viewers, um Miguel Alvarez uh, has been a BC diabetes patient almost as long as I've been practicing and as an endocrinologist uh, from the mid 90s, I think. Uh, and he's had diabetes nearly all his life. You're going to have to guess how old he is or ask him. Uh, Miguel and I share a passion for cycling, though he has far eclipsed me with his ultramarathon rides, raising money for the JDRF. Miguel never says no when I ask him to help me, and today is no exception. Miguel, thank you for coming on the weekly and to tell us about the Tandem T-Slim Basal IQ. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. I'm always happy to try to contribute something to the community. So, um, yeah. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, the Tandem T-Slim X2 pump with Basal IQ. It's a bit of a mouthful, um, but uh, just a little caveat. I've just started using this pump uh, about three weeks ago. So everything I tell you is uh, I'm still in the honeymoon phase, so to speak. So a little bit about me. I've been a type one diabetic for, I'm in my 51st year. Um, I'm, I'm quite active. Like uh, Dr. Elliot said, I, I do a lot of cycling. Uh, I do weights. I, I try to work out uh, at least, six times a week, um, just for the consistency uh, sake to, to keep my sugars in check. Um, my day job is an IT project manager, but I was uh, formerly a professional musician and photographer. Um, I started using an insulin pump in 2008. My first pump was anonymous, and I found uh, that it it, it's really good for active people because of the flexibility it allows you with your basal rates. Um, it gives you, uh, it helps you when you're quite active, you can reduce your basal, you can turn it off, etc. Little picture there is just shows me and riding in Death Valley uh, last fall. So I've recently transitioned, as I mentioned, from a Medtronic 630G pump when Animus exited the, the pump market, and it was a bit of a, um, 
a change. It, you know, the choice was made for me more or less. So I acquired the pump and I got, got to know it. Um, it worked fine. It was reliable. I didn't have anything um, terrible to say about it. Although um, the form ah. factor was a bit of a concern for me. I also use uh, Dexcom as well. I recently converted to the G6, used the G5 for quite a while. I have to be honest and say that I've had mixed results with using uh, the CGM. It's not always foolproof for me. You know, for some people, it's it, it works well, and I that's that's super great. Um, I would really uh, would like it to perform a little better for me, but it takes a little getting used to, and you have to learn the uh, sort of idiosyncrasies of of each one to to know how to deal with things. So, like I said, I just started using a tandem pump three weeks ago. I love technology. I love using these these tools, but I'll say that they're not always perfect, um, and you always have to go into these things with your eyes wide open. Um, and be aware of, of what you're getting into. And even so, I have the CGM, et cetera. I test diligently. I'm, I'm pretty, um, it's just what I do. Uh, good or bad, I, I, I have to validate what my, my CGM is telling me. Um, so I do what I can. So here's a, a couple of photos of the, um, the tandem and the and the G6, uh, how the you know it's similar to what we've seen before. G6 uh, transmits fi every five minutes to to the tandem pump. Now the interesting thing with this pump um, that sort of sets it apart from from others is that it's software driven or software oriented. So this pump can be updated over time as new features are are released. And an example of this is the basal IQ, um, which is the, the feature that suspends your basal delivery when it predicts that you're going to go low. And you can see it in the, in the image that there's a little red bar and it just, that's, that's an indicator of where your insulin delivery was suspended. The X2 pump, it will work with both the G5 sensor and the G6. Now the difference being, if you use a G5 sensor, it, the pump is merely a display for your Dexcom readings. If you're on a G6, then you can use the basal IQ. And when you order a, a tandem pump, you have the choice, and I just went through this, so that's why I'm aware of it. Um, when you have the pump ordered, if you're on a G5, you order the G5, and if you choose to move to G6, you can update your pump to make sure it's compatible. If you go with a G6 out of the box um, and you're using a G5 sensor, it's not backwards compatible, just so you can't revert back to the G5 configuration. So Basal IQ only works with the G6. And like I said, it suspends delivery when it's sensing an upcoming low. Uh, and I'll, I'll say that you know, it's early days for me and because I have sort of mixed results with the CGM, but my gut feel is that it is helpful. Um, I've had some nights where um, I've been trending lower and the suspend feature has been kicking in and it's actually done a pretty decent job of holding me, even though I tend to have um, my meter readings tend to be a little bit more than my sensor readings. Even so, it's kept me in a, in a good range and it did prevent me from going low. So that's definitely a positive. Um, if we go to the, the next slide. Um, yeah, this is an example of, of one night. And this is you know, by no means uh, an everyday occurrence. I should have bought a lottery ticket when, when I had this, but um, you can see, and if you look closely at the graph where it starts trending down, the suspend feature would, would have kicked in to keep me stable. And it, it pretty much worked. And, and given the fact that I was a little bit, actually a little bit higher than what it indicated, it, um, it really kept me in, in check. 
And I've, I've seen this uh, probably in the last three weeks, three or four times. So it's been, it's been helpful, I think. Overall, it th I think it's going to be a good thing for me. Um, have to be careful with, you know, the, my CGM readings. And I'm, I'm still working with, with Tandem and, and Dexcom to get a better sense for, you know, where I place my, my sensor, how I, how I um, put it on, because there's some different techniques that you could possibly use that might change the behavior. So still playing with it. Uh, but overall, my, my, my first impressions are, are pretty positive. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, to really fully rely on the technology, the sensor readings need to be um, reliable. And it's all contingent on what your sensor is telling you because the pump's only reacting to that. So it's not always the case for me. Um, and I would say I would use caution, especially out of the gate. If you start using the technology, you really need to get a feel for it, how you respond, um, understand the behavior of it, learn how to use it um, before you just kind of dive in head first. So as a um, quick summary of, of this pump, I would say um, the pluses and minuses. I think it should be probably two pluses for the software updates. And, and let me just say that the, the important point about software updates is that, for example, I had a 630G. If I wanted to go to the hybrid closed loop pump, the 670, I'd have to replace the pump. With the tandem um, pump, because it's software driven, they're gonna release an update. Uh, which they did with the basal IQ. So my pump doesn't become obsolete. I don't need to wait four years or whatever it is to, um, to get the latest technology. And, you know, my understanding is they'll keep refining it and keep improving it over time. So it's very similar to loop. Um, it's not as good in terms of the data display that you would have on your app, for example, because I'm using the Dexcom app. But I mean, things are kind of moving in the right direction that, that way from a proprietary expect, uh, perspective. Um, this pump is a touch screen, which is really nice. Uh, it's more like your iPhone than, than uh, uh, the Medtronic pump, for example. It's, a, it's got a good form factor. It's smaller. For me, it's important because I ride with my pump and I like to tuck it away and, and I don't like to have a big bulky pump. Um, and of course, the basal IQ is a, a really beneficial feature for most people, I would say. Some of the negatives and, you know, negatives or, or the less good things, I would say, is if your CGM is inaccurate, obviously, um, it's, it's more difficult to obtain the, the, the benefits of the basal IQ feature. Like I said, I'd be super happy. I'd be the happiest guy in the world if, if I had a CGM that was just giving me rock solid readings all the time. I would, I would be super happy. Um, you need to be a little bit cautious when treating your lows because, because of the basal IQ kicking in, it's reducing your, your insulin dosage. It's easier to over treat a low. Um, I haven't had any real difficulty with that, but I'm just more cognizant of that. Um, some of the things that kind of make me less happy are if my CGM is, is too far off and I might get, it might show say below 3.1 when I'm actually 5.5, I'll be getting, I can turn my, my phone off, my uh, Dexcom app on my phone. So I don't get warned for that, but the pump is going to warn you. So it'll, it'll give you a warning because it's gone below 3.1. So it's just a bit of an inconvenience because the sensor is off. Um, touch screen takes a little bit of getting used to, not too much. I'm, I've become accustomed to it now, so it's not a big deal at all. And the only other thing really is when you're filling the, um, the insulin cartridge with insulin, it's a little finicky. You have to follow a few different kind of steps uh, to avoid getting bubbles and things in it. But you know, you do it a couple of times and you get used to it and it's, it's all good. So. There you go. That's, that's my experience. Thanks, Miguel. We have one quick question from Terry. As a former 630G user, 
why did you go to the tandem pump and not transition over to and learn quick on the 670G instead? Um, I think part of, part of the initial thinking was I wanted a smaller pump. And, and that in itself isn't a good enough reason, I would say. Um, you know, form should follow function. And I would say, though, that the tandem pump um, has a lot of flexibility, um, it, you know, very clear display, easy to use. And I did, you know, I was, one of the things I, I wasn't too keen on with Medtronic was the Medtronic sensor, um, which I had tried and I, I wasn't that um, fond of it. So just my own personal uh, opinion about it. So I stuck with uh, Dexcom. So because the Dexcom's compatible with the tandem, that's the direction I chose. Thanks, Miguel. Now, Dr. Ali, could you tell us about some of the exciting things we have happening at B BC Diabetes, especially related to Sanitize? Yes. Uh, thank you, Tristan. Um, you know, we're all living in COVID-19 and, and, and BC Diabetes has a very significant research arm. Well, Sanitize is a company that makes a, a topical antiseptic, which we are studying with them for diabetic foot ulcers. And they've now branched into using uh, the same uh, safe and non-toxic uh, disinfectant for, to, uh, to, to do two things, to prevent uh, COVID-19 in, in high-risk frontline workers. And secondly, to treat people with established COVID disease um, with um, inhalations of, of the nitric oxide uh, chemical. So BC Diabetes is involved in two research projects with, with Sanitize and the parent company. Uh, and we're very excited about that. So if you, uh, if you know anybody who's got COVID-19 and you're looking after them, then you can volunteer for the first study. And if, uh, if you know anybody who's actually got COVID-19, then they will be eligible to get inhalations of, of, these, uh, of this chemical. So it's very exciting being uh, part of the research uh, thrust for COVID-19, not just diabetes. Okay, we're going to jump into some questions now. We have one from last week from Kyla, and it's to Tom. I switched over from the Medtronic to Tandem Insulin Pump last year. I don't use linked CGM for control IQ since none of them are covered, but I do use a Freestyle Libre with Meow Meow 2 linked to tomato. Since switching to Tandem, my blood sugars have gone up, and I have also increased my basal rates because of this. I go through so much more insulin now. I also had to switch from six millimeter to nine millimeter cannula because I was having so many issues with insulin getting through. Is this just happening to me or is it a common problem with Tandem and Autosoft supplies? Thanks, Lana. Well, I'm not qualified to answer the second question because I don't know enough about the, the Tandem pump and perhaps uh, uh, Miguel can answer that. But I can tell you that during COVID-19, everybody's stressed out. And when we're stressed out, we need more insulin. Our body releases, you know, glucagon and growth hormone and cortisol. So we're more insulin resistant and we need more insulin. So that, that I think, answers what's going on uh, during COVID. Miguel, any comments about the cannulas with, uh, with the tandem system? Um, no, I haven't had any difficulty with mine. And I've never really had any difficulty with um, the, uh, the cannulas on the that I've used. I mean, occasionally I get a, a kinked cannula and that stops delivery, but no, I can't say that, you know, my insulin delivery from my Medtronic pump to my tandem pump hasn't changed. I have the same dosage. Okay, thank you. The next question is for from Maureen, and we're gonna go to Ben for this one. I am also an Omnipod user and looper. I know that they recommend in the loop, Doc, setting your max adjusted basal to three times your max pump basal rate. What do you set yours to in order to cover your meals? I think that's actually a better question for Savelli, who's using the Omnipod. What do you set your max basal to when you're getting the auto bolus? Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta set it higher. <clears throat> that is the suggested say, setting, but... Um, uh, my b basal runs at 0 0.4, 0 0.3 uh, units an hour, and uh, my max bolus is 
and, and my max basal are set to three or four uh, units. Yeah. Wow. So if, if I could comment, it's set to 10 times your basal rate. Yeah. Not, not three times. Okay. It, has done, it hasn't been done as a one day setting. I, I slowly uh, got, got comfortable with that. Okay, thank you. The next one is from Ken and it's to Dr. Elliot. One quarter of all hospital admissions in the UK have diabetes. Is this the case in British Columbia? Um, I know the number is very high and I can tell you that one quarter of all visits to family doctors is, is for diabetes. So I'm not surprised that diabetes is involved in, in, in a quarter of uh, British Columbian hospitalization. So, um, you know, diabetes hasn't caused a quarter, but it's a contributing factor. So it's just a reminder that, you know, if we do, diabetes is a condition, not a disease. If we do everything right, then we're not going to get sick and we're not going to be in hospital. So, um, you know, I'm so grateful that I've got staff to help me put that message out and to help help all of you, the viewers and those who are not on to, to do all the things you need to do to stay healthy. Thanks, Dr. Elliot. The next question is from Sophie. Sophie says, I am really bad with technology and that has always prevented me from using some of these systems. How good do you have to be with technology to use these products? We'll go to Dr. Elliot for that one. No, I, I'm, well, no, we're going to go, let, let's give each, each of the panelists uh, a stab at it, starting with Ben. Sure. So for Loop specifically, um, it does definitely seem daunting at first, but the website, Loop Docs, um, has all of the information you need. And if you're comfortable just following online instructions and you have access to a Mac computer and an iPhone, I think you wouldn't have any trouble. And there is that Facebook group for support. Um, so I'd say, honestly, like if you can follow an instruction manual, you are, you have enough to do, uh, you have enough to loop essentially. Yeah, I, I would say give yourself more credit. <clears throat> uh, it, it, no one is really bad with technology. You just have to spend more time with it maybe to make it work. Uh, but I would just say um, you could do it. Just spend more time and, and there's, there, there are communities that will go out of their way to, to help you with it. Uh, the loop community is is uh, is that and uh, just uh, if you have any questions uh, keep asking and keep trying and you can make it happen it it might not happen day one as as you're sitting down to try to set it up but day three day four you're gonna get there anything to add mark uh, I'm pretty much in the same ballpark um, the, the support from Medtronic um, when I moved over to the 670 and as Dr. Elliot said earlier, I'm not afraid of technology. So when I got, when, when, when the packaging got in the mail, um, I saw it about a week before I was supposed to have training on it. I had everything online from the instructions that came with it. I had everything in place online and working um, the week before um, I even talked to them. The instructions are very good. Um, the hardest part about doing anything with, with, with the pumps, in my opinion, um, if you, is it, basically inserting the infusion sets and inserting the CGMs. Um, and even those have gotten to the point where it, it's basically, you put something up against your body, you, you hit a switch and it does it for you. Um, so learning curve on, on, on the Medtronic side of things, and I suspect with any of the other ones, um, if you can read, um, you can probably handle it quite well. Thanks, Mark. Miguel, do you want to you want to touch anything onto that? Yeah, um, I would say the first thing is don't be afraid. Uh, it, there are lots of resources to support users. Um, whatever manufacturer you go with, if you choose to, they have resources to help you. Um, whether they're online or I know for me, because I have a very, a very recent experience, you know, I was provided with a trainer who went through everything with me and I continue to stay in touch with her as I learn this pump and I, as I discover new things. So 
what I would recommend is don't be afraid to read the manual, get a feel for it before you're actually starting to use it. But because insulin pumps are very re repetitive tools, like you use the same thing over and over typically, it'll just become second nature over time, but you just have to be a little bit patient. Some brilliant insight from everyone. Dr. Elliott, do you want to add anything to that? Yes, I, I do. I, I, um, I, I'm a kind of a technology geek myself. Um, and, and, and as you know, all four of the people, all four of our panelists are involved in technology. So yeah, what, what about, like, what's my experience with, with non-technological patients who've used these HCL pumps? So I think we've had, um, we've got 15 people on the Medtronic 670G, and I would, uh, and, and two people on the tandem. Um, Miguel's one of them, and the other person is, I don't really know well. But of the Medtronic people, um, I'd say two thirds of them were had ordinary computer skills. Um, I, of those two thirds, I'd say all of those two thirds weren't weren't particularly good at carb counting or insulin adjustment. All the skills that that are at the very foundation of of good diabetes control with type one, and I have been astonished how well how beautifully they've done on, on the 670G system. So um, I, I think M Miguel's advice is just give it a go. I, it, you know, if you have coverage, then what are you waiting for? Just go for it. And if, if you're inclined, if you don't have coverage, if you've, if you've got a thick wallet, go for it. And if you haven't got a thick wallet, then you've got, you've got the loop solution. Um, with uh, with the Omnipod and uh, so you know, don't let fear of technology stop you trying HCL pumping. It's 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 so fantastic. Now, Doctor, we have one last question. This is from Rob. The government not funding CGM has been a source of immense frustration. Is there anything, in your opinion, that we can do to lobby the government to cover it? Do you think there's a chance of coverage coming soon? Well, I, uh, thanks, Rob. This is, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about coverage for CGM. Um, you know, Minister Dix is our patient. Um, he did give me some very encouraging, he sent me a very encouraging text message. Uh, six weeks ago, we, we've applied for a pilot study for 100 people, and I, I suspect he's going to announce that. That's you know, 100 people is great, but that's not uh, going to cover the, 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 the 50,000 in the province. Um, Tristan is our social media expert, Rob, and um, he and I and others are going to put our heads together for a campaign to, to up the ante. Uh, yes, so I think the, quick, the short answer is yes, there's something we can do. We just have to direct you that way. Thank you for the question. Okay, at this point, we're going to go to Dr. Elliott for his closing monologue. Well, uh, a big thank you to our amazing uh, panelists, Ben, Savelli, Mark, and Miguel. It's, it's, it's so exciting to, to be part of this process. Uh, I learned a lot today. It's not like I know it all, and, and I rely on you to, to keep me up to date. Uh, and a thank you also to the production team for putting it all together. Just to remind you that next week we move over for three plus weeks to look at individual body organs and how to keep them healthy when you're living with diabetes. Next week, it's the heart with special guest cardiologist, Dr. Tony Lamass. Apart from discussing the importance of good sugar, good blood pressure and good cholesterol control, Dr. Lamass will focus on the potential for the lowering of blood levels of lead through chelation therapy to keep our heart strong. Now, we're sorry we didn't get to all of your questions today, but we do hope to get to the majority of them next time. So at this point, we'd like to thank our partners. We'd like to thank Savelli, Ben, Mark, and Miguel, and of course you, our beloved audience. Have a lovely afternoon, Friday, and long weekend. Bye-bye.